Hello, hello, I'm Li Hao. So today we're going to talk about Svelte Cube. Svelte Cube is a component library that uses 3JS to let you build 3D scenes in Svelte application. Let's watch Rich Harris announce Svelte Cube in the recent Svelte Summit. Today I'm open sourcing the result of that work. It's a component library called Svelte Cube and you can use it right now. There is a caveat, it is not feature complete. The documentation has gaps, some things will definitely change, but I know you people well enough to know that that won't stop you. So before we start, disclaimer first, sorry about the clickbaity title, but I am not the author of Svelte Cube and I do not help design and implement Svelte Cube at all. I'm just someone who loves about Svelte and likes to talk about Svelte. So today we're going to talk about 3GS and we're going to take a look at Svelte Cube and we're going to figure out how we can you write a Svelte component using 3GS. So if you take a look at the Svelte Cubed tutorials over here, you'll see that um, this is how you implement Svelte Cubed uh, scene, where you have a, a canvas, a mesh, mesh is like an object uh, with some geometry and a camera that looks at the 3D scene. Right, so this is what you write in Svelte Cube. But if you're going to write it in 3JS, this is what you're going to write. Holy shit, there's so many lines of code. But, but how does Svelte Cube works? How does Svelte Cube component libraries, how, how do we have all these components built out based on all these 3JS codes? Right here, all the codes are imperative, meaning you have to line by line create like each of the geometry and you have to add it one by one into the scene. Um, of, of course, you can see some similarities over here. You have the mesh and you have um, a mesh component over here. So how does this mesh component wraps around this um, mesh um, object or instance from 3GS? Right, so that's what we're going to take a look today. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom uh, following this tutorial, this is what you achieve with Svelte Cubed. Um, I've tried my best, but this is what I come up with a 3GS code. Uh, which I wrote ahead of time to prepare for this. Right, so let's take a look at the 3GS code that I've written. Right, uh, this is our Svelte component. Um, I bind a container reference and we're going to render our 3GS into this um, com uh, container. Right, so in the render scene, what you see here is that we create a scene, create a camera, um, we create a renderer and set up some of the things and then we start to add items, we start to create instant, uh, objects and add it to the scene. Right? So you can see here, this line, scene, add. If I search this, you find that I have adding a few things to the scene. Right? I add a box, add a group, I add lights, lighting, and add, um, yeah. And then uh, there's a grouping. Right? So here, you see I create a group and I create like the floor and the grid, which is uh, these two things, right? The floor and the grid, which allows you to have the shadow. So I add these two into a group and add the group to the scene. Right, so um, we're going to figure out how we can sort of like transform all this, right? Make the group a sphere component, make the group, uh, make this 3D object a sphere component, make the plane, which is the floor, a sphere component, um, uh, as closely as possible as how we, um, how sphere cube. Uh, works, right? So we will kind of look at the Svelte Cube uh, reference over here, look at the API, um, how we're going to use them and figure out what are the things that we're going to, um, con how, how, what are things or what are the prop props that we can pass in from there, right? Uh, sounds good. Let's try and figure that out together, right? So first of all, um, you, so the scene is a component is it no um first of all there's no scene component there's one canvas right so uh so the canvas if you scroll all the way down you see that the canvas um is nowhere to be found over here and also if you look at here there's no renderer right so um, in, in 3GS, you need two things to start like the whole scene, right? First is the scene object where you will add 
items to the scene and you need a renderer to render the scene, right? So uh, this too, I believe adds up to the canvas component, right? So that's why we don't have anything. Uh, we don't have the scene up component or canvas component. So we just wrap everything around this canvas component. So um, I guess that's what we're going to do. So first of all, let's create a lib folder and create our first component called the canvas.svelte. Okay, so here, um, let's see, let me try to side by side mode so that you can see our changes um, in real time. And what I'm gonna do here is that I can create another div. Okay, um, no, let's see. No, we're not going to create another div. We are going to import. We're going to create a line break and we're going to import our scene. No, it's called canvas component, right? So we're going to add our canvas component over here. Uh, you see nothing yet, but um, in our canvas component, probably we're going to add a div like this, right? So that we can render our um, 3GS objects into it. So we're going to create this. Uh, let's see. Let's also create this. Let's copy some of the things over here. Let's also create container. We don't have this yet. We have a style over here. Um, so to, to let you see this canvas itself, I'm going to add an outline rate um, 2px solid. Save this. So this is our canvas component, right? This is what we have on top using imperative 3 js code, uh, the scene that we created. Um, here is uh, a scene that we are going to create uh, using Svelte component. Right, so firstly, um, let's see what we have in a scene. Right, we need to set up um, all this. Right, so let's, let's try to copy some of this code over here. Um, background, right? So, uh, oh, so hold on. I need to import 3GS. Okay, so first is the background. If you look at here, um, background. Background is a props for canvas. Okay, so, so I'm gonna uh, let it to be a prop. So export let background. Um, yeah. So if, if background, I'm going to set, uh, so whenever backgrounds change, we're going to call scene dot background equals to background, right? Every time when a scene changes, uh, whenever background changes, we're going to add, um, we're going to change the background of scene. And here I'm going to make it like a block, right? Um, should I, let me think. Yeah. I probably will have to add like some statement to redraw the scene, right? Every time background change, I need to update the background and redraw the scene, right? I, I'm not sure how to do this yet, but this is what I'm going to do. So background, okay. So here, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to pass in the background, right? Uh, so background, uh, we're going to pass in a color called papaya whip. Oops, so this we need to import 3GS as well. Right, so don't worry that you are creating a new instance and pass it into the background over here. Since uh, if this is not going to change, um, it's not reactive, this instance will only create once and pass it to Svelte only once. So uh, if you look at the tutorial on top, um, quickly come back again, you'll find that Papaya whip. Um, this is exactly how it's being uh, shown in the tutorial, right? You add a background and three color whip, right? Exactly what we're doing over here. We're just gonna figure out how we're gonna do that. Okay, so, wow. Okay, so let's come back over here. Uh, let's see what else we have. So we have this, we have the scene now. We have, um, we need to create a renderer, right? So I'm gonna come over here and create the renderer. So this, I believe, is also 
Let's see canvas. Do we have size? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. No, we don't have. Uh, but I remember seeing it in the canvas size. No, we don't have it, and we don't have anything, right? So probably we just let it be the container with. Uh, so container we we set a fixed height, right? So I believe here it's that, uh, the parent container sets the, uh, the, the the parent container sets the dimension, and the canvas just grow hundred percent into the container, right? So that's why, uh, it, it does not. You don't does not need to pass in a width and a height, but now we, we take it from the container, but uh, we can't do it like this immediately because um, this container will only be available when we mount this component, right? So uh, let's add on mount. Let's import on mount from Svelte, and let's create all this during on mount. So uh, on mount. Mount and let's move all this to here, right? And here, gonna have the scene. Um, okay, I'm gonna set a variable called scene and here, right? So, uh, in that case, I need to make sure that my scene is ready before I can set it right the same time i also need to set this over here well that's that's quite a much uh but let's let's just let it be first okay so to do duplicated code over here okay so here we have our renderer we have a scene okay let's let's see what else we need okay so we need to add the the whole uh we need to add the con you know, add the canvas, uh, add the renderer the element into the container, and that's it, I guess. Let's take a look at what we have. Right, we have a black empty scene over here. Um, yeah, so at least we have something now. Um, so next thing is we're gonna add some objects, right? Um, and then we need to render, right? So probably we don't have any, um, objects, we don't have any lights, so that's why you see everything is black over here. So we're going to create a few components, right? First is the camera, and then there's a mesh, right? So first, let's let's create that. So let's create a mesh.svelte and a camera. So this camera is called a perspective camera, so we're going to create perspective camera.svelte. And how we're going to use this is that we're going to come over here in the canvas and we, oops, and we're going to add the camera, perspective camera, and we're going to add the mesh. All right, and if you take a look over here, uh, the tutorial, you see that it's exactly here, right? Mesh, right? So here you pass in a geometry. Um, this geometry, let's, let's copy from our scene. This geometry is the box geometry, right? Uh, okay, so, uh, so mesh geometry of box geometry, box geometry. And then also, uh, I believe they have a material of a three mesh standard material, right? So this. I have this over here already, so let's copy this and uh, material. Okay. So uh let's try to add this two in. So first is come over here, I'm gonna create a script and I'm gonna export two props, right? One is the geometry and one is the material material. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, pass it in. So we have to come over here and create this actual 3GS mesh object, right? So this is this mesh. So I'm going to create mesh. And 
and let's see and yeah so this and we have to add the add the mesh itself into the scene right but how do we get the scene how, how do we add it in right so um so first of all there's two things we need to settle right so first is that if you console log over here And you come over here and inspect. Poppy, let's refresh. Uh, let's kill and refresh. Um, let me zoom it up a bit. Realize that this mesh object is not being rendered at all. Um, why? Well, that's because um, the canvas does not render its children, right? Although we add this, uh, all this into the canvas and uh, under the canvas component, but it's um, but this is supposed to render into the default slot, right? But the canvas itself does not have a default slot. So we're going to add that in, right? We're going to add slots in. So immediately when add slots, you see high high from mesh, right? So now uh, this is being rendered now. But now the second thing that we need to handle, settle is how I'm going to get this box and add it back to the, uh, the scene. Right? The scene is created in the canvas. And we have to pass some somehow pass this scene down to the the children, right? So passing from parent to children, uh, how, what should we do? Well, we can use context. Right? So let's create context. Uh, maybe let's create a file called a util uh, context.js. Right? The reason I create this is that um, uh, when we create uh, when we get our set context we need to pass a key right and that key itself um can be a string or any object because the context itself is like a map it takes it can take in uh, numbers strings objects and anything right so um to make it unique and to make a context value key unique we can use like something like a symbol or object right because object in <coughs> Because when you create objects, uh, when you pass objects into the map, it's being compared by reference, right? So no two objects are the same unless they are referencing to the same object instance. So here I'm gonna export const a, um, I'm just gonna call the canvas, canvas context, and I'm gonna pass everything in, right? So this is the key, and I'm gonna say sets. Context canvas and the context value, right? This is tricky, right? The scene, if we pass the scene right now in, uh, it's going to be undefined and you can't read it later on, right? So I probably will have to say maybe like a, we create an object like root. I uh, know, I call it root. Yeah, root or canvas root, right? Cons, okay. And I'm going to create a property called scene. Um, again, if I do it like this, um, right now it will be undefined. But later on we can uh, set it, uh, as long as we read it when it's being set, then probably we are good, right? So we don't render the slot first until, okay, so first thing, uh, sorry, let, let's rewind a bit. So let's come over here, canvas root. Let's uh, set this scene goes to the scene, right? So we, we have the context set up correctly. Now if a children reads, um, let's, let's try to read it, right? If get context. This is not. Okay. If we read this now, Oh, it's, it's already set up, right? So that's that's good for us. Wait, let, let me see. I think this is because of hard reloading, right? So when you when you first mount the whole thing, uh, this con canvas scene itself is undefined, right? Um, so maybe one thing we can do is uh, wait for this 
canvas to be mounted, wait, wait for the scene to be ready, only we render the children, right? So we can say, uh, if scene, then, okay, let's refresh again. Then when the, as soon as scene is ready, only we render the children, now the scene is there, right? So we can get this scene out, out of the, let's const scene equals to, um, get context uh, hold on. yeah scene destructuring it get context and we're gonna add scene dot add box over here okay so um i believe it's added but because we don't have a camera yet i believe let's let's try and see let's let's do the camera as well so same thing, let's just copy the code over here, uh, but ex, uh, instead of, where's, where's our camera? Okay, right, we need a camera instead. This, let's copy over here, um, camera. Okay, um, here I believe camera, you have to set a position right um, i'm not sure what is this at all um uh, we'll pass in one because it's a square scene um i'm not sure where the camera position oh okay here right so we take in position as a props with an array and we're gonna set it like this right so uh let's come over here do it like this okay so we have a props called position. Right, and here we're gonna say position and zero, one, two. Right, let's maybe have a default value of zero, zero, zero. And last but not the least, we need to add scene, uh, camera to the scene. Oh wait, I deleted this line. Get the scene from the context, add it to the Right, so let's take a look over here. Let's refresh. Um, nothing yet. Wow, I'm not sure what I did wrong over here. Uh, we have, I think we have everything, right? So probably we just need to render the scene, right? This one, we haven't rendered the camera. So camera itself, um, Okay, we need to look at a place. So, camera, look at. Well, camera, um, we, we don't really add camera to the scene. Well, I thought we need to add it to the scene, but we do not. Right, so camera itself is not added to this. We don't have to add a camera to the scene, but what we need is we need to call renderer to render the scene and the camera. Right, so for camera, we need to do it slightly differently, right? We need to come over here and say a add camera, something like that. Or maybe we just root, uh, canvas root, and canvas root dot camera equals to our camera. Right. So we set this camera, but we need to figure a way to tell the root to do something. Right, so maybe we can define to, to render it, right? So maybe we can come over here. Um, we define a function called um, render. Yeah, render. So here I'm going to say a camera is undefined, right? And we have a function called render. And let, let's see what we're going to do. We are going to... Um, call a renderer and then, so here we need to access the render, right? So let renderer, or maybe we just have the renderer on canvas as well. Renderer. So maybe this is fine as well initially. And then here uh, we can see canvas root dot renderer dot render. 
So what we can call renderer is the render scene with so render scene. So the scene is the canvas root dot scene, and this is the canvas root dot. Okay, so we can call this render function in our camera. Canvas root render. Whoa, cool! Now we have a blank background, but we can't see our cube. Not sure where is our cube. Um, so a cube is the mesh. Right, it has the geometry and material. I believe we pass it correctly, um, but it's nowhere to be found. Uh, probably because we don't have a position for it. Right, let's see where is the mesh. Right, the box. Do you have a position for a box? Um, hmm. Okay, maybe camera. Look. Okay, we have that already. Um, 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 interesting. I'm not sure what went wrong over here. Uh, client height and width should be equals to one. Okay. So this is correct. We have done this. Render size. Uh, we have. Have we done that? Yeah, we have done that. Right. So um probably probably here once we do this, we also need to call the render, right? So now we're gonna say root instead, root scene at root dot render. Save. No, nothing happened. Okay. Out together. Right, so we have The geometry. Yeah, that's all we need, right? Um, maybe we don't have lights, but we have we've seen everything, right? So without lights, it's probably gonna be look like a black cube. But the problem now is where is our cube? So the scene, scene, yeah, I'm not good at 3GS at all. So you probably have to bear with me now. Um, how, how I will debug this. How do we know whether it's added to the scene correctly? Um, scene, canvas scene here, render, um, console log, canvas root scene. Maybe you can figure out what is in the scene. At this point, when we try to render, right? Okay, so we have. Wow, we have background children. We have mesh. Okay, I think it's it's here, um. But position, it's at zero zero zero. So probably we 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 already see this, um. So the the object is already in a scene but nowhere to be found. Ah, this is tricky. Let's let's try let's try and figure out what here root context scene at box. Render. Exactly the same. Uh, is it this one? No. Everything is exactly the same. Canvas context, um, camera, render. Right. 
position of the camera. Okay, so ah, okay, position of the camera. Right, right. So here we need to set the position of our camera. So here, uh, position instead, uh, because we are looking at, we we uh, we we place our camera at zero 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 and we're looking at zero zero zero, right? Uh, probably we have to pull our camera back a bit, and the position of camera is one one three. So I'm gonna copy that, save. Yeah, so so now we are at the position one one three and looking at the cube itself because cube is looking at zero zero zero. Right, and if our camera is there, it it and it, it's not looking at anything, right? It's it's at zero 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 looking at zero zero zero. So yeah, it's looking at itself. So now we have our camera, we have our mesh. Now we can add lights. Right, so same thing goes, right? So I'm gonna quickly go through uh this, right? We're gonna create two lights object, right? The ambient light and directional light. So it's same thing. We just felt, and then we're gonna create directional light. But felt, and I guess the code is pretty much the same, right? So, uh, this, this looks something like this. Uh, let's copy the code from the mesh. So you add to the scene, right? So it's it's the same thing. Scene. Root scene instead. Yeah, and then same thing goes with the. So this is something that we can configure, right? So if you look over here, if you look at the lights, this is the default color of the light, and this is the intensity of the light. So spot let color equals this. Spot intensity equals to one. So we can come over here to the here and add ambient light intensity equals to zero point six. And directional light is the same thing. Uh, so here I'm gonna copy this. Um, copy the code from mesh. And here I'm gonna replace this light. Right, light scene. So this is the intensity, intensity. Uh, this is the color, color. And this is the position, right? So spot position, spot let target position. I think both case we can default to zero, zero, zero. This one I'm gonna set to position zero, one, and two. And here we're gonna say target position. Oops. Okay, so here we are going at our directional light. This. Save this no light. Um, now you see something it looks weird. Um, let's see what, what goes wrong again. Let's try to refresh this again. Yeah, so uh, directional light is added. Right, so now, yeah, it's like this, right? So, um, so we have almost everything in here, uh, except that you now. So now slowly you realize that there's code that is kind of duplicated in all our components, right? Here we add scene, uh, and then we call render. Here we add. Actually, I'm not sure about the render. Let's try to remove this. Save and yeah, you have to call render, right? Uh, so we add the item and then we render and then we add so here the get context add the item to the scene and ren call the render again this is um kind of like copy pasted over 
several components, right? Uh, this creating the new 3GS component is something that is unique to that component, but this is something that we can refactor. So this is something we gonna try to refactor this out. Uh, the get context, adding the item to the scene and call the render. So how, how do we reuse this get context code? Right, so get context is just like a normal function, right? You can call it here or you can call it somewhere else. But the key is you have to call, call get context in the component initialization, right? Um, so you probably have seen errors where if you try to call uh, maybe like some callback here, right? If you call get context later on when you do like a click, uh, on click or something, callback over here, you probably get, get an error because you, you'll say that the component uh, get context should only be called during component initialization, which is during, which is here. Uh, so this line of code, whenever, as long as it's not inside any um, function that will be called later on or in like on mount callbacks and things like that, you can use get context, right? So, um, and you can, you can have a function like this, say setup and call get context here. Uh, and then we call the setup function in, during component initialization, right? The key is to call this during component initialization, then it's okay to call, get context to be called in a, in a, in a function. Right? So here, uh, this is what we're gonna refactor to, right? So we probably can take in this thing and then return us light, right? Uh, if, if we do it this way, then this is the um, then we can cop we can refactor all this code in here, right? The root equals to the get context uh, root scene at the item, right? So this is the item item, and we're gonna call render, and we're gonna return the item. Right, so yep, we haven't used the we haven't used light yet, but actually. Uh, this is what where you probably would need to right. So if you have a way to change the intensity, right? So maybe let's let's try to create a input that we can change intensity. So input type range min equals to zero, max equals one, bind value equals to intensity. Uh, maybe step equals to one and let intensity I'm gonna pass intensity over here for our directional light. Uh okay default is point All right so here if we change this nothing happens right what you need is you need to here come over here and say light dot intensity equals intensity uh, let's do this again. Oh, nothing happens. Oh wait, so we probably have to call root render, right? Uh, which means we need to return both of them. Root, root and light. So here I'm gonna say root dot render. Okay, let's try and see. Wait, nothing happens yet. Okay, so let's, let's try to Oh wait, this is ambient light. Ah, man. <laughs> okay, so no wonder. Okay, so this I'm gonna pass it here as well. Uh, you know, uh, spell shorthand, right? Uh, let's try and see. Okay, I need to print out intensity somewhere. So inspect console. Cannot set properties of undefined intensity ambient light. Oh, okay. Ambient light light. Oh, this is written as item. Okay, okay. So item light. Try again. Yeah, so you can see now it's getting lighter and darker, right? With the changing intensity. Right, so if we don't have root render, we refresh this. Realize that it 
changing it does not work, right? You have to, every time you change something in a scene, you have to re-render it again, right? That's where we call this render. Right, so now you can see changing intensity in the ambient light. Let's leave it to this. Over here, um, yeah, so probably we can have this function uh, extracted out um, for other for other components as well, right? So here I'm gonna export this setup function, export setup. Um, nothing special, right? Everything we need is here, except we need to import and get context. Okay, so we can import setup from the context and we call setup over here like this, right? So, so it still works, right? Uh, so next thing is we're gonna come over here to the um, mesh. Uh, no, let's let's try a directional light first. So here we're gonna import setup instead. And we're gonna set up the three dimensional like right. So it returns an object of roots and the item, which is in our case the directional like. So um, now we can also come over here and say uh, if the directional like dot intensity equals intensity root render whoops so now our directional light changes as well uh maybe we have two different intensity two 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 okay so this one whoops uh something goes wrong Intensity to okay. Intensity equals in. Right, so now this one changed the directional like intensity, but it's not working. Wait, why? Um, let's see. Uh, no error. Refresh again. Maybe you can't tell here. Directional like. Seven. Well, it is changing, but it's not affecting this scene as much or at all. It's not affecting the scene at all. Um, why? That's interesting. I'm not quite fairly sure. Um, root render. Yeah, we do trigger the root to re-render with the latest value of this. Okay, so if we do not have Directional light. Then we are not. Uh, everything is just like a light. There's there's no one light that sh casts on one direction. Huh. So let's not. That's that interest. That's weird. Um. Hmm. Maybe it's not set it this way. I'm not quite sure though. Uh, I'm not really sure about how. Wait, wait, I know why we have a typo. Okay, let's close this. Right, so now it's getting darker and whiter as we change the intensity. Right, so probably, uh, wait, so here we don't need this anymore, right? Because it's already in the setup. This we don't need anymore. Um, and here we can actually don't need this. If we change this, refresh, uh, because this will still be evaluated when, when, whenever intensity change, right? Or on the first rent, uh, when you first mount the item, right? So this already, this will 
we will call again, right? If, even if you have here and here, this will be called again. So we don't need this. And same thing, we can actually do a lot of things, uh, similar things over here. We can move all this in here. So, um, so if we have something like, say, let's see what else we can do. Position of the light. Right, so if instead we have position, um, let's see, position is maybe we have a, um, maybe from negative five to five, step of one, x equals to minus two, I believe, and this should be the x. Uh, if you have this, come over here, you can see the lights moving from one direction to another, right? So yeah, so this is this is how we can set this up. Um uh reactive felt cube component. Right, so uh so what we're gonna do next comp is is basically redo the whole thing again, right? Uh, for mesh and for directional light. So I'm not going to do that right now, um, but we're going to look at one interesting place, right? It's the group, right? So if you create a group component, uh, whatever objects that you add is add to the group instead of adding directly to the scene, right? So you're not actually adding to the, we should not actually add to the scene when we do set up, it's actually adding to, um, sort of like the parent component, right? Uh, I'm not sure you can get what I'm trying to say here, but if you look at the example of the group, group, you see that now, uh, later on we will create a group, group.svelte. Uh, you can come over here and create a group component. And inside group component, you create another mesh component. Right, so uh, the mesh is added to the group and group is added to the canvas, right? So mesh is added to the canvas. So they're actually adding to the parent rather than getting the root scene and add it to that root scene. So this is something we're gonna tweak a bit, right? So how do you keep getting parents, right? So you can get a lot of parents over here, uh, right? You can group a lot of ways of grouping things, right? So how do you, um, create this kind of uh, groupings. How, how do you get like parents, right? So again, we're going to use context. Uh, what it works is that we have another context called the parent context. And every time when you create a new um, object over here, right? Each of this will have to override the parent context. So when you look at context, when you get the context value, you look for the value from the nearest parent, right? So if here sets up a context, here sets up a context, here sets up another context. Um, when mesh is reading that context, it'll read from Y, because it, this is the nearest parent. And Y is trying to read from context, read from its nearest parents, which is X, and X reads from its nearest parents, which is the canvas. Right? So that is what I'm gonna do, uh, uh, a parent context. So here, uh, let's, let's just copy some of the mesh code over here. Um, I think I already have it here. The mesh is this, right? The geometry and the material is like this. Geometry, material. Copy this too. So um, we are going to create the group component. Right, so the group component, uh, again, we're going to copy everything we have from the mesh. Um, okay, no, I think we copy from ambient lights better because we have a setup here, right? So setup, um, here we're going to create a new group, which is a group. That's all. Create a new group. Um, and yeah, for now we don't do anything. We just set up like a new group. We don't take in any props. We don't take in anything. Okay, so we have a new group. Uh, so when we do set up, uh, here we need another context, right? We say we need a parent context. So kind of uh, const parent new context. 
So here we need to, when you do set up, we need to get the parents, right? Uh, we need the root, we also need the parents. So we need the parents. Uh, because root is where we can call the render. We, we can trigger a re-render of the whole scene. Right? So parents, we're going to say, uh, first is we're going to get context of the parents. Right? So if, if you are the root, you don't have any parents, then um, probably we need to get the root scene. Right. If if the root, if the parent is not available, then we get the scene. We add to the scene. If the parent is available, then we're gonna use the parent instead to add it in here. At the same time, we also need to set context. Uh, set a new parent. Uh, the new parent is actually yourself, right? Because, yeah, the group, right? So here, uh, if we come over here now, um, let's see. We probably have already added the a new group and the new mesh. Um, the only thing is we need to set the position of the group. Right, the group position is this. So um, group group position. So I'm just get I'm just being lazy here, but you should take this from the uh, props, right? Uh, I believe you can do it yourself now. So just go and figure it yourself. So here we have the group. We have the it's missing. Ah, okay. The mesh is still not added. Okay, so uh, the group itself can render children. So in slots. Right, and then the mesh itself is still added to the, um, to the roots scene, right? So now we need to do the setup, setup, and here we're gonna set up the mesh. So here we have the root, and the item is the box. This we don't need. This we don't need. We don't need all this. Uh, if I refresh this whole. Thing, um. Now I believe it's added to the group already, right? So if we come over here and we take a look at the scene itself, right? Where's our canvas? Canvas. If we come over here and console log. Console log. Refresh. Let's take a look at our latest scene. We have mesh, ambient light, light group, and then for group, we have children, which is the mesh, right? That's good. That's great. So we have everything now. Um, the thing is use, um, this needs some rotation, if I remember, right? The whole, this needs some rotation. Uh, so here I'm going to add the, it's going to do it directly, right? This is the floor instead. No, this is the box. Oh, wait, I can't, yeah, I can't. Can I directly, I need to set a rotation. Let's rotation and receive shadow, right? Export. Let receive shadow to false. Export let cast shadow equals false. So later on, the box will cast a shadow and then the floor will receive a shadow. Um, so here I need to, same thing, I need to come over here and say the box rotation is still zero, zero, zero. Rotation zero. Rotation one, rotation two. This receive shadow and cast shadow. It's false. Okay. Um, and then every time we change, we do a root render. Okay. So now we set things up. Let's come over here and let's. Um, let's set the rotation. 
this is going to be this and receive shadow is true and on the other hand this is going to be casting shadow right um of course we need to set the whole scene to be able to have shadow and stuff um that can be controlled through um props but let, I'm, I'm just gonna be lazy uh you can figure that out yourself i'm just gonna come over here and set everything up like this right yeah now you see a shadow being casted over here right so um so last thing, last thing, last thing you can see that when we do um, rotation, uh, there's a, there's a like, finishing touches, rotation, right? There's an SC on frame. There's an SC on frame, a uh, spell cube on frame that changes the rotation of the object, right? So we can have a spin over here like this. Uh, we can set rotation already because we already takes in that props and if we change this to the spin zero one right you'll notice that now we can spin our object already but we need to do it on frame right and on frame it's actually a request animation frame we do it on the next frame and you know when you use request animation frame you need to take care of a few things right first is you need to um uh you need to set you need to set up and then you need to make sure to remember to clean it up right uh you can use the on frame anywhere in any component whenever the component is being removed you need to remember to uh remove the on frame uh request animation frame so that we're gonna create another file called the live uh, frame dot js spot function call on frame right this will take in a callback and this is where we're going to set a request animation frame right and we need to remember to remove it right so uh, we can use the on mount from svelte so when you use on mount in here, you make sure that on frame has to be called during component initialization because on mount itself has to be called during component initialization. Um, but a good thing is that once you set this up like this, uh, you can return a cleanup function, and whenever the component is being cleaned up, removed, um, this uh, this callback function will be called and will clean up for you. Right. So here we're gonna cancel animation frame call frame right um so we're gonna create a function uh frame callback because this we're gonna do it on a loop right so here we're gonna call the callback and we're gonna request animation frame again uh, equals request and here we're gonna say the frame callback is this right and now we can use our on frame on frame on frame spin plus equal 0 0.5 save this come back and let's take a look it's spinning and because of binding this is moving as well but as you can see here we have our on frame uh setting up and if you this component is being unmounted you are pretty sure that this will be cancelled right so that's all of this video uh we've spent quite a long time talking through all the different bits and pieces but let's do some summary over here right first of all we learned a few things on how first is we learned how we can convert a imperative code like this right to a declarative one on how we can create uh wrap this to a component right and secondly, we learn about how we can refactor context. Here, uh, we notice that every shell cube component, uh, our component, every component, we um, have to get the context and set things up. We can refactor that out into a function as long as this setup function is being called during component initialization. Right? And we learn how, in the context, we also learn how do we do, uh, we can get the latest parent. 
uh, by getting the parent and then we set and override the parent, right? Get and set context, we, we do that, right? And last but not the least, we learn about uh, on mount comp uh, using um, same thing of refactoring the life cycle. We refactor a new life, we create a new life cycle called on frame, has to be called during componentialization and it does request animation frame, right? So that's all for this video. If you like this kind of video, uh, smash the thumbs up button and comment what you want to look at next, right? Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I hope you have done that and see you in the next video. See ya, bye-bye.